Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our virtual Sunday worship. We will begin the hymn sing with hymn 255, There's a Voice in the Wilderness. Unexpected and mysterious. Of a list. 
Elizabeth's great joy, and she ran to greet the woman who would recognize her boy. We are called to the dawn. from all creation sings, now the heavens start to whisper.
sun to the stirring faint within. See a promise deeply planted, tall to spring from just this town. Like the soul beneath the frost line, hearts grow soft to Our next hymn is also from the new hymnal, 902, Come Now, O oh God.
of light one candle to watch for Messiah, which is him 240. Dear beloved, as we are called to ponder mystery and await the coming Christ to embody God's compassion for each fragile human life, we are reminded that God is with us in our longing to bring healing to the earth while we watch with joy and wonder for the promised Savior's birth. Good morning and welcome to this fourth Sunday of Advent, we are happy and glad that you are able to join us to worship as we continue our waiting for the coming of the Christ child. I would also encourage you this morning to take a few moments to read your announcement for all of uh, the wonderful ministry opportunities that we offer. So please take a moment uh, to read all of those as it has all the information that you need for the ministry opportunities. This morning, it is my joy and privilege to welcome to our worship and for this discipleship through stewardship moment, our brother Don Salt, who will be sharing with us the ministries that he shared at Redeemer Lutheran Church. So my brother Don, it's all over to you. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> my name is Don Salt. I've been property chair for, at Redeemer for many years now. The property committee is responsible for maintenance of the building and grounds. I believe that every member of Redeemer is a member of the property committee. Since we have been in COVID lockdown, uh, Jeff and I have put new LED light bulbs in the sanctuary. This will reduce our electrical bill and make the sanctuary brighter. I can't wait for everybody to be there and see them. A June 3rd storm caused damage in the parish hall roof, as many of you know. We contracted church, we contacted Church Mutual Insurance. They came out, estimated the damage, and sent us a check for repairs. With help from John Slaughter and Pastor McCash, we contracted to have the new roof put on the entire parish hall. If you don't, if you haven't driven by and seen the new roof, you should. It really looks good. Leaf Guard put new gutters up on the back side of the parish hall and on the end of the building. A contractor chose and installed a new light on the parish hall end of the building. Two windows were repaired, and we contracted Young's Tree Service to clean up all the fallen trees and the dead trees that and ground all the stumps. With the help from Randy, all the outside buildings have been repaired. And then I turned my attention to the shed next to the office. The doors were falling off and the sides needed repaired. Randy and I rebuilt the doors, repainted the, repaired the sides, and repainted the shed. I relocated the Wi-Fi in the building for more usable to a more usable location. 
I'm in the building at least every other day, making sure that there are no problems. I also check the office building to make sure everything is in working order. Normally, we have a spring cleanup day for the grounds. Then we turn it over to the garden club to plant flowers and maintain them for the summer. In the fall, we have a leaf cleanup. Scott Fitcher brings his trailer in to haul away the leaves. Just another summer in the property committee at Redeemer. You never know what's going to happen next. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks, my brother, Don. As Don had shared, there are so much that they do as a property. And so I want to personally thank Don and his team uh, for keeping up with the building maintenance. Much, much appreciated. As we know, without a building, we cannot be together as a church even though we are not in the building right now, it's been taken care of. And so whatever you're giving, if you're prayerfully uh, consider giving towards the building fund, that will much, much be appreciated as there are a lot of things that uh, need to be done and taken care of. So thank you again. And thank you for uh, chairing that committee. Much, much appreciated. Let us continue my dear brothers and sisters as we share in our mission statement. As a community of faith, we worship the triune God. We are called to serve all God's people and creation through word and deed. Let us continue to prepare as we worship our Lord. Now, my dear beloved, let us turn to God as we confess our sin and seek God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Lord of Israel who comes to set us free, the mighty Savior who comes to show mercy, the dawn from on high who guides us into peace. Amen.
Now let us come before God in confession. To you, O God, we lift up our souls. You know us through and through. We confess our sins to you. Remember not our sins. Remember us with your steadfast love. Show us your ways. Teach us your paths and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness. In Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. O oh, children of God, come with joy and draw water from the well of salvation. Remember the gift of baptism. Your sin is washed away in the name of Jesus. You belong to Christ. You are anointed to serve. Stand up and raise your heads. The reign of God is near. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you.
God of steadfast love and faithfulness, you promise to make a covenant with your chosen ones and to establish the throne of your servant David forever. As we light this fourth candle, open our hearts to the mystery of incarnation, reveal to your servant Mary, and plant your word in us that it may grow and prosper. Show us your favor, O rock of our salvation. Reveal your love to us and strengthen us for service in your name. Amen. At this time, as we light the fourth candle, let us sing to him, light the candle. spree stir up your power lord christ and come with your abundant grace and might free us from the sin that will obstruct your mercy that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world for you live and reign with the father and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen
A reading from 2 Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You, Lord, have lifted up the Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me. on those who fear you from generation to generation. You, Lord, have lifted up the lowly. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy. The promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children. reading from Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let his fall like fire within 
us speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. A Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth is her in her old age, has also conceived a son. This is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The man looked a little worried when he came to the doctor. So the doctor, the first thing was troubling him. Well, to tell you the true doc, yes, the patient answered, you see, I, 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 I seem to be getting forgetful. I never sure I can remember where I put the car or whether I answered a letter or where I'm going or what it is I'm going to do once I get there, even if I get there. So I really, really need your help. What can I do? Well, the doctor mused for a moment, and then answered in his kindest tones, pay me in advance. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, that's easier said than done, isn't it? To not be afraid. To not feel afraid, especially at this time when we are faced with a pandemic, with over 300,000 people losing their lives with this virus in this country alone. And more people are getting sick day and day out. To not be afraid when it looks like life is anything but life, when our lives seems to be disrupted big time, are, are you saying to us not to be afraid and that you have found favor with God? Are you for real? As you know, things we usually do on a regular basis and take for granted. Things simple as hugging our loved ones or shaking hands and eating out at our favorite restaurant or, or shopping and visiting families and friends, taking families vacations. The thing we simply take for granted, well, all of a sudden, we just can't do them anymore because of the fear of getting sick or getting our loved ones sick. Even worshiping in our nice little 
church building there as a body of Christ in that sanctuary is not possible at this time for us at Redeemer. We all know that. In this fearful time and when it seems like our lives are being disturbed and disrupted big time, my dear brothers and sisters, what are we to do? What are we to do? Like many of you, one of the things I wanted to do was to get back into that building to worship. I really miss being in that building as a community of faith. And in fact, I had plans in place that, well, if the whole congregation cannot get back to worship for Christmas Eve at least, or Christmas morning worship service, at least the worship leaders and myself will be able to go and lead worship in the building. Well, as I was making those plans, I believe the good Lord has other plans. You see, the virus was getting closer home as many people in the area was, were getting infected. And even someone from the congregation got infected. And so with this happening, my plans to lead worship with the team, worship team in the building was disrupted. But thanks be to God, through the worship leaders, tech team, and pastoral colleagues, God continues to direct or to not go into that building, but to continue to lead worship the way we have been doing it. Today, I want to take this opportunity, my dear brothers and sisters, to thank you for your understanding and for your support. And let us remind all in the midst of all of this, God continues to be with us and continues to speak to us through each other. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, when our life seems disrupted, it does not mean that God has abandoned us. Yes, we may not be able to worship with each other in that building, but we are still able to worship through, Drew, through Zoom, Facebook Live, and YouTube videos of the worship service. We may not be able to give hugs and kisses or even able to visit with our loved ones who live far away, but we can still talk to them, perhaps through a phone call or write them a card, perhaps even FaceTime if you have the ability to. We still have them around and we can have flowers or meal delivered to them. God is still present with us in the midst. My friend, God has a plan to guide us safely through every seemingly impossible situation. For, as the Bible says, all things are possible with God. We are encouraged but to trust God in every circumstances in life. At this time, I would like to introduce our sister Gail to share a faith story. As I'm thinking of this, I have just this morning asked Gail, and I'm quite sure the Holy Spirit will speak to us through her, as she, have she, uh, she will be sharing her experience of when she had faced uh, a bit of disruption in her life. So, Gail, if you don't mind, please share with us at this time. Good morning. Let's hope the Holy Spirit comes through. Um, so pastor asked me to share a little bit, and I actually thought of a couple scenarios, but I'm going to focus on one. Um, as most of you know, I'm a registered nurse, and for about 34 years, I worked at Hahnemann Hospital down in Philadelphia. Um, the last 15 years of my employment there, I ran the trauma program, and we were a busy level one trauma program. So imagine my surprise when in June of 2019, we heard that we were closing in two months. Now we knew that we were having some financial difficulties, but we had been bought by a new owner. We, they had made us lots of promises. We were getting new computer systems, upgrading things, and all of a sudden we were closing. So that totally rocked my world. Um, I always assumed that I would retire from Hahnemann I knew nothing different. I had gone to Hahnemann as my nursing school, my first job there, held many different positions throughout the hospital. And like I said, I was employed there for um, 34 years. And then I started thinking, you know, somebody's going to step in and they're going to take over. Nobody's going to let Hahnemann close. We were the very first trauma center in Philadelphia in 1985. 
lots of histories that, there. Hanuman's been used in movies. Um, you know, the outside of the building has been shown. In fact, just this past week, I was watching an episode of ER, for those of you that remember that. And there was one of the residents who had just mentioned that he had just gotten hired in a surgical position and another character said, where? And he said, Hanuman. And they're like, in Philadelphia? And they're like, yes. So it was like, oh my goodness, you know? Um, so it's just such history. So for myself, that just was a major ding in, on my self-esteem. It was totally out of my control, but I was like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? Um, Alex was, still had one more year of Drexel. I had to pay for college. I was worried about how was I gonna get him through? you know, pay my bills, um, do whatever. I spent a lot of days crying. I cried on the phone with pastor. I cried with some of my friends from Redeemer, but I took a deep breath and realized I can do this, you know, and I got my resume together and I started looking for a job, you know, again, something I did not have to do since 1985. Um, found a position that I applied for up at Capitol Health, got an interview, and I remember going to my son, Andrew, who had graduated from college that summer and had already just secured his first teaching job. And I'm asking him advice on an interview. <laughs> so, okay, if Andrew can get a job, I can get another job. So I went in, you know, nervous as anything, but I knew that I had the support of, you know, God on my side and, and my, um, my history, you know, my education, my accomplishments. Um, and apparently I must have wowed them because the next day they called and offered me the job. Um, but it wasn't without my love and support of my family and friends from Redeemer that, that got me through. And, and God. And in thinking back, you know, I'd been faced with other challenges. You know, I believe that God does not give you more than you can handle. So when I found out years ago that I was pregnant with twins, nobody else in the family had twins. I was the last of the cousins from that generation to get pregnant. And I kept saying, you watch, it's going to be me. And sure enough, on that first ultrasound, there they were. Um, you know, I went through a nasty divorce, as many of you know, from coming through Redeemer, but I came out of that a lot stronger. Um, you know, once the pain goes away, you know, I met, I met Bob, we got remarried, and I realized I'm, I'm in a much better place now than I would have been, you know, through my first life. Um, so I just think that when, you know, you're thrown with curveballs that you don't expect or experience, just having your faith in God and allowing your friends to help get you through. And again, look, God does not give you more than you can handle and he will get you through the crisis. Thank you for sharing with us, Gail. Um, it is amazing how God do work in and through us, even when our life seems to be disrupted. I know from my own experience, when my life is disrupted and does not go according to God's plans or according to my plans. It can be scary and quite honestly troubling. And perhaps you two have those experience with the loss of a job and no income, the fear of how you're going to provide for yourself, your family. Uh, when life seems to be disrupted with the news of bad health and incurable sickness, the fear of, of possibly dying and leaving our loved ones, when life is disrupted with the loss of a loved one even, the fear of being lonely and how life will be different, asking how are we going to and how can we live the rest of our life like this without our loved ones. My dear brothers and sisters, as someone once said, if God doesn't provide a way out, God will provide a way through as Gail had shared with her testimony a moment ago. And so we are encouraged not to be fearful, but to trust in a God, knowing that all things are possible with God. In today's gospel, we hear the story of Mary. Now, Mary was someone whose life was disrupted, but in her disruption and even fear, she trusted God and responded by saying, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And so today, my dear brothers and sisters, I say to you, like Mary, may our response in the time of fear and in life's disruption, let us be of courage and trust that knowing we too 
our favored ones. For as the Bible says, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Indeed, the assurance that God is with us is the promise of Christmas. Amen. continue as we worship our Lord, confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Inspire the faith of their people, cultivate understanding among us, and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, 
You humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence, especially D. Grover, Christina Jackson, Lois Hirschberger, Winnie Ferguson, Patty Paul, Aaron Winter, Beth Connolly, Linda Bartleson, Lynn Lepo, Lois Gradle, Jean Lippincott, Danny Vile, Marty Danielson, David Erdman, Edith Williams, Elizabeth Rhinus, Linda Winter, Chris Ryan, Tim Cousy, Helen Susco, Don Farnham, Mike Dunn, Mary Lou and Donald Robinson, John Schwenk, and the family and friends of Thelma Holkob, who passed away on December 14th, and all others that we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Katharina Van Bora Luther and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they serve you. We give thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us take a moment to share the Lord's peace with each other. At this time, grateful givers, I want to thank you again for your generous generosity as you continue to support the ministry and mission of making Christ known at Redeemer Lutheran Church. So thank you for blessing us with your gifts of finances. Let us pray. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Oh, dear beloved, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh. 
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh, favored one, blessed with his body and blood and the word of good news, may now the creator of the star bless your advent waiting, the long expected savior fill you with love, the unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Oh, no. 
announcements. We have openings and we'll need five new council members in 2021. So if you're interested in having your name placed on the ballot or would like more information about what that means to serve on council, please reach out to Holly in the church office and she'll be able to help you or steer you to somebody who can answer all your questions. For ministry leaders or chairs of various committees, a reminder that your annual report needs to be submitted to Holly no later than January 3rd. So we have time to get everything together for our annual congregational meeting, which will be held on January 31st. More information to follow regarding the format of that meeting. Please join us for our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day worship services. Christmas Eve will be at 7 p.m. and Christmas Day will be at 0920. There will be no hymn sing prior to these worship services and they will not be broadcast live on Facebook. To access these services, you need to follow the directions in your bulletin, which means going to our website, RedeemerLutheranChurchPendel.org, and then you go to events on the far right of the black ribbon, select the service you wanna watch, and click the link where it says click here, and that will take you to YouTube so that you can view the worship service. Remember to enjoy your holidays, but remember to be smart and be safe. Wear your mask, maintain six feet of social distancing and wash your hands. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I just wanna say thank you to those who took the time to record a silent night parts. Uh, really appreciate it and uh hope you guys are looking forward to seeing it on christmas eve